Welcome to the Markman M2 video series. In this video, we look into Yoko Ono's relationship with the Beatles. Although personal opinions on this topic vary greatly, this video is geared at getting to the fundamentals of this well-reviewed topic. Please allow me to first give a general background before we dive in. Yoko Ono's relationship with the Beatles was complex and often controversial. She met John Lennon in 1966 and they began a romantic relationship. Her involvement with the band caused significant tension among the members, particularly Paul McCartney. Ono's avant-garde art and experimental music alienated some fans and critics, and her public presence during the band's final years was often seen as a disruptive influence. However, she also played a significant role in Lennon's personal and artistic growth and their collaboration on projects like the Beatles album and John Lennon Plastic Ono Band was highly influential. Let's take a closer look. My, my version is that uh, we were in London and Yoko came around to my house, knocking on the door. Someone said, there's this Japanese lady outside there. I said, okay, let her in. She came in and she said, it's John Cage's birthday and us artists want to collect a bunch of manuscripts to give him for his, whatever it was, 60th or something birthday. Right. And I thought immediately, I thought, I don't really want to do this. Right. She said, but my friend John might. Those were very paranoid times. And let's face it, we, we didn't welcome Yoko in the studio because we thought it was a guy thing. And if she wants to sit in on the session, it's something that we wouldn't have done. In the studio with us, it was like, uh, no, excuse me, um, we're working. It's like they're going overboard about it. But John always does, you know, you can't go saying, be sensible about it and don't bring it to meetings. And it was, an, it was an unspoken rule that you wouldn't sit in on a session. But, so Yoko was doing it, so I think it created uncomfortable moments. It's difficult starting right from scratch with Yoko there, because I start out writing songs about white walls, <laughs> just because I, you know, I think she, John and Yoko would like that, you know. I mean, this is not an ordinary relationship. She's not an ordinary woman. You've got to admit that. We were just fuming. The thing is, it was really just the initial shock of Yoko sitting on one of the amps. Excuse me, that's my amp. Um, she couldn't use a stool. Yoko for the breakup, as a lot no, of people no, no. did, have you? No, I think, you know, at the beginning it was difficult because John in particular was ready to do something else. And when Yoko came along, uh, part of her attraction, I think, was the sort of avant-garde side of things, which she was famous for, and still is. Um, so she showed him another way to be that was very attractive to him. And I could see that, you know, she just sort of said, well, no, look, you know, how about this? Don't you like this? Are you just a rock and roller? And John loved strong women. Bless her, but his first wife wasn't. She'd once said to me, you know, I, all I want is a sort of a guy who wants to pipe and slippers. I, my feeling was he had to clear the decks too. Yeah. Because if he used to work with Yoko, he couldn't have these sort of beetle like appendages yeah. because, carrying, coming around with because, him. Which, because he had to give his life to Yoko. Yeah. This was the nature of the relationship. I, nature of her demand, you think? No. No, his, yeah. his demand. Don't, don't get, people get that wrong, you know. John was hopelessly in yeah. love with Yoko, yeah. you know. So that it, I think John's saying now, obviously it came to a push between Yoko and the Beatles, it's Yoko, you know. But I, she certainly didn't break the group up. The group was breaking up, and I think she attracted John so much to another way of life. I think we would have all continued the Beatles, but Yoko came along, John fell wildly in love with her, he needed a big, big change in his life, and he got it. You know, he came to live in New York, he kind of threw over all his English um, contacts and everything, and, and, you know, you can't blame him. That's what he wants to do in his life. So we, we had to kind of uh, fade into the background to allow them to have their relationship. What are we going to do, ringing him up? Hey, John, you know, hey, come and see me. Leave Yoko. 
you know. I mean, yeah. that obviously never going to happen. Then went on to do very successfully and had a sort of second part to his career, writing things like Imagine and doing uh, Give Peace a Chance. I don't think he would have done that without Yoko. She was taking him in a completely new direction. All stuff we'd admired in other people, but suddenly he had a ride on this book. Before Lennon's death, he and Yoko lived in New York, where she managed their business affairs, and rumors of a strained relationship with McCartney persisted. Recently, McCartney and his wife, Linda, met with Yoko for a reunion. Should not everyone have been surprised? I mean, are, are you... That's what everyone seems to think. I, we, Yoko and I are sort of at war, you know. Um, I think it's based on events of the last kind of ten years. Um, now, during the last year or so, we've we've uh, had a better relationship than we've ever had, probably. Yeah. Uh, we just find we're suddenly able to talk to each other. It's it's a weird thing, really. But uh, she's a nice lady. We didn't know her too well, really, uh, until quite recently, until maybe um, a few years ago. Eighties, you know, beginning of the eighties when I just thought, well, maybe I've misunderstood. Maybe it's my mistake, um, not hers. So I telephoned her and started talking to her about just things generally. She said, why are you telephoning? And uh, I said, well, you know, I think I've misunderstood you and I think I've made a big mistake. And uh, as you were John's wife and uh, I was very fond of John, I feel that he would have liked me to telephone you and, and kind of say hello and see what's going on. And she said, well, don't do me any favors, you know, don't do it out of pity or don't sympathy. I don't want that, you know, I don't want charity. Which at first I thought, hmm, hmm. <laughs> you know, and, it got, and I had to say, no, no, she's right. She's right. I thought she was a hard woman. I don't think she is now. I think she's just the opposite. I think she's very uh, loving caring woman uh i think i thought she was uh pushy uh which i think's wrong i don't think she is i think she's just uh, herself she's determined more than some other people to be herself some people oh, no man i tell you you know you know live and let live it's too too sort of you know life's too short for all that stuff you know i haven't got the greatest relationship that's true but we get on we're okay you do yeah sure. here tonight it's a privilege to come along and to do this. Um, John, no matter what people thought of him from minute to minute, was a very, very beautiful person. And it's an honor to uh, be able to do this with uh, Yoko and Sean. May I say this, that I really think it's grand that he's come here and I'm very happy about that. And I think that Joe would have been very pleased. Later on, we we suddenly sort of thought, you know what, John's in love with this girl. If he wants to bring her in the studio, we've got to cope with that. And we learned to cope with it. And, you know, I now feel that he had the right to do that. Um, it might have been better if he'd been a little bit more diplomatic and sort of says, hey, guys, you know, I'd love her to be, I, I, I really love her and I just want to be near her all the time. Right. But we had to figure that out. You've just got to respect that. So we did, and I do. Paul came out, Paul McCartney came out and cleared the air a little bit and said, look, you know, for those people that who That was are, very sweet of him to yeah. do that. I'm sure that, you know, she got tons of letters saying, how dare you say that? I mean, you know, because they like the idea of us being in a boxing ring, you know, sort of fighting. Also, it's good to have, they, people like having someone to demonize. People like having yeah, someone yeah. to blame, you know, and you were, you were the easy target, I guess. Well, you know, we know each other for such a long time and and she's a very sensitive and intelligent guy, so of course, you know, she understands what was going on, yeah. that it wasn't going on. What looks like a Beatles breakthrough after all these years, one of music's longest running feuds just might finally be over. It's been a long and winding road, but Paul McCartney says he has worked it out with Yoko Ono, ending one of rock and roll's greatest feuds. In the latest issue of Rolling Stone, McCartney says the key to reconciling with John Lennon's wife was time, the great healer. McCartney tells the magazine, I thought if John loved her, there's got to be something. He's not stupid. And he added, it's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to hold on to a grudge you never really had? We were just pissed that the Beatles were breaking up. 
Ono has long been blamed as the reason for the band's breakup. I think that he genuinely did a kind of accounting of, you know, various things that have gone on in this crazy long life that he's had, and he decided that it wasn't worth it to have this unfinished business.